proudest day and the proudest time in the, the seat of a rally here. Because that day and that hour and those minutes, I got the butt between my teeth. You know, I really stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. That's all we said. I can still picture that run. That was just the best, best run ever. Welcome along to Crunching Gears. Let's talk rally. The rally podcast, episode 29. Uh, start off by welcome along, Connor, as always. Connor, you're very welcome. Kevin, thank you. My favourite time of the week. Get a <laughs> chance to catch up on what happened at the weekend. Exactly, exactly. Before we start, as always, can you please subscribe, You know, share, uh, rate the podcast. All those things make a massive difference. Um, you can see it in the, the figures we're getting each week. It's been tremendous this last few weeks, so thank you so much. Uh, in this episode, we're going to look back at last weekend, Galway summer stages, the latest round of the National Championship, uh, Dava Forest, um, a single stage, but run three times, fabulous wee rally, and then we're looking forward to rally Clara Diggian and the uh, Lakeland stages this weekend. So uh, another busy program ahead. So I suppose uh, Connor will start off in Galway. Um, what a battle there again this weekend! I know it was fantastic, and the amount of times that leaderboard changed during the the the, the, the what do you call it the, the the on Sunday it was amazing. Yeah. It really was, you know, like um, you'll hear later on, I caught up with Paddy Robinson and like I put it to Paddy, like was it almost a good thing that Josh wasn't there? Because like, you know, you had all this change of leaders, like there was 10 guys, maybe more going there, all felt they could at least, at the very least, we're going to come away with a podium and like, if not the one. And it, it's just, it's fascinating to see, you know, Josh taking out of the equation that, you know, you had Joe McGonagall, you had Ben Comiskey, you know, Robert Barpel, uh, you know, all these other guys, uh, David Guest left for a while, uh, Andrew Purcell, you know, and uh, all come and set great times. It made it a really interesting run. It really did. And, and like after the first loop, you know, you still didn't know where to put your money on, on, you know, who was going to take it. It mm-hmm. was so close and, you know, just uh, was nip and tuck, you know, it was very, very good. Really enjoyed it. And, you know, unbelievable ending to get Mikhail name back at the top on uh, that was just wow you know brought back memories obviously of um, Austin etc but uh, just to hear the Mikhail name being mentioned and then first victory for the the right hand drive R5 yeah you know uh, like uh, you know, credit to Ryan O'Kean there who's you know converting the car over like phenomenal success for you know a small team there but based outside Oma uh, but like uh, as you say, the McHale name back in the winner's circle, like Gareth, I think the last time he won was almost 10 years ago, if not 10 years ago. Like, so for him to come back and like um, Joe Sharp caught up with him and to hear him saying, you know, that the stepping stones that he has put in place for this year, it's all starting to come together. And I'm sure he knows he's not there yet, but it's it's it's, it's moving in the right direction for him. Absolutely. Listen, it was incredible. And I, again, you know, I was impressed that he's got to grips with the, the the car so quickly you know he's only what the second third or outing you know in the yeah. year so it's fantastic to see him and I think actually Kevin it might be closer to 12 years since he last won incredible to 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 come back and and put on such a performance absolutely absolutely you know and like these we know we know these r fives are not the easiest car to get the maximum out of you really have to grab them by the scruff of the neck and throw them down the road so like it, it, it's fabulous, uh, you know, like Brendan Comiskey, you know, he had a great run, unfortunately, he kept it on, I think it was the seventh stage. Um, Andrew Purcell was only his second or third rally in the, the Skoda to come away with second. Yeah. You know, Joe McGonagall showing a good form, a good pace there as well. You know, um, you know, there's a, a heap of boys there, great runs, you know. And then, and unfortunately, is- mechanical issues and going off and one thing or another. But, you know, the pace is there with them. Well, the pace is absolutely there. And David Guest, I know you mentioned him already, but, you know, a heck of a performance from David. Like, mm-hmm. genuinely, that way, he was looking very good straight out from the, you know, from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And, then, you know, we can't forget, you know, the two-wheel drive as well. It's, 
you know, Galway is always one of them. That the, the guys in the escorts always want to do well, and you know, the king and the king of the hills or whatever it is in Galway. But it was Richard Moffat that came away with the the two wheel drive in the Starlet. And uh, you know, we all know how good the Starlet is and the, the right hands. And you know, Richard has had that car now maybe two, three years, and it's great to see it all finally coming together there as well. I know, like to see a, a starlet finishing fourth overall, it's a bit incredible. Yeah. Like genuinely is. And mm-hmm. you know, in front of Gary Kiernan, Gareth Sayers, etc. as well. So yeah. uh and you know, Tim McNulty back in seventh, like that's a heck of a performance by Richard to to get the car dragged by the scruff of the neck up into fourth yeah. place. Mm-hmm. And we should mention Tim McNulty, who made the last yeah. minute switch over to the polo as well, you know. So yeah, you know, another one of the another polo and right hand drive at you know. I don't know where all these polos are keep coming out of. <laughs> I know, but like you know, when you just think of the names on that on that entry list, you know, we had Gareth McHale, Robert Barable, you know, Tim McNulty, like you know, seriously, uh, mm-hmm. Patter Hurston, you know, it was incredible. It really was. It was you know, flashback to the old days, as I say, with the McHale name then coming out on top, you know. Uh, yes. I even like, you know, uh like you mentioned McHale and Barable. Like their fathers <laughs> too, you know. Yeah. Never mind themselves too. Like so, they, you know the stories that could be told there. So, ah, uh, uh, fascinating, fascinating. Um, well, I suppose we should cut over now to hear what the guys had to say. Uh, once again, our man uh, uh, behind the camera, uh, Joe Sharp, caught up with Gareth McHale, Andrew Purcell, Robert Barable, and then Richard Moffat and Gary Kern. And we should point out as well, whenever Joe spoke to the guys. At that stage, Robert Barbell was shown second on the, the timesheet and Andrew Purcell third. Uh, but that was rectified then that Andrew Purcell mentions that there was a query over one of his times. But we'll let you hear what the guys have to say. Gareth McHale, one or here in the Galway Summer Rally. That's nice. Yeah, no, I was delighted now, you know, um the old stepping stones are sort of we're going steps up the ladder. We're ha- very happy here, you know, to get the win there in Galway. And um, it's a great rally, you know, it's good competition and everything and we're delighted now to get everything home and I want to say thanks to Ronan and all the lads and Jerry McGarrity and Ears Motorsport there with the tyres and sponsors and Brian and Jer for during the year and it's been great so uh, no, absolutely delighted. Yes and the car went very well for you today? Yeah the car hasn't missed a beat all weekend and um, you know, it's been brilliant and it's set up 100%, they're very very happy with it, you know, love the car, it's a very very good car so um, on to the next one now hopefully. Looking forward to your next event, which will be yeah, hopefully the harvest. We might maybe go up to the harvest. So um, yeah, so we'll see how we get on and um, the next couple of weeks. We might, we might maybe make an appearance in the harvest. That's good. Thank you very much. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. And the personal, we're here now at the finish of the Galway Rally and third overall. Happy with that? Yeah, good day's fun. A um, couple of fastest times there today. We had one stage in the middle loop where we dropped 15 with an overshoot. So it kind of uh, it knocked steam out of us, but there's a bit of a query there, I think, over we were blocked behind Tim's time on the third last stage, so they're trying to start it there now, so if that's sorted, it should give a second, but we'll we'll wait and see. And the car went well for you today? No problem with the car, Tom Garner, the lads done a great job, couldn't couldn't ask for more, all down to the driver. And the driver done good? <laughs> ah, we done okay, look, we were trying to keep it in one piece ready for Wexford in two weeks' time, that'd be a bit an open enough end for us, so we're looking forward to it. Very good, congratulations, man. thanks again. Thanks again, thank you. Robert Barable, second overall here in Galway today. Yeah, uh, very good race all day between was four or five of us, but with a couple of dropouts on the last loop there. But uh, myself and Andrew, it turns out we only got second position by 0.7 of a second. So the uh, job well done. Um, congratulations to Garrett on the win. He drove impeccable all day and set an unbel- unbelievable pace. So credit where credit's due. But uh, yeah, we had a great day ourselves. Took us a little while to get into because we haven't been out since Limerick. But apart from that, now we're happy enough. Yeah, and after the first few stages, there were six stages within 10 seconds. Yeah, it's good It's good to see when you see four people coming off one stage and there's only half a second or three quarters of a second between us. Like, you know, it's that's like something you kind of see in racing, like, you know, I'm not rallying over 10 or 20 kilometres, but uh, it's enjoyable to see. It just shows you the pace of a lot of people in the championship. Yeah, and the car went well to you. Yeah, the car worked really well. To be fair to Don Buckley, he prepares, in fact, in fact, he prepares the car every rally, so... Uh, our job is much easier to literally just get in and get driving at it, but uh, fair play to the club, they ran a brilliant rally, three brilliant stages, um, yeah, and we'll move on to next year. And how will you finish out the championship? For- uh, we're going to have it, we're going to go to Donegal Harvest, uh, it's Paddy's home rally, so um, we'll, go, we'll go to that rally and uh, round off the year with that one and then see what we do then for 2023. Well done, thank you very All much. Right, no water. Richard Moffat, one another two wheel drive rally here today. Yeah, we're absolutely delighted. Um, I'm sure we, we've had this car three years now and we've 
set good save signs here and there, but never been able to really put it all together. So finally, uh, finally, we were result was come our way, and we uh, had a top day. Um, the boys actually, we had an issue this morning on the way out to the first stage, and they managed to come out and, and fix it. So we thought we weren't going anywhere. So to, to come from there to where we are now, we're, we're delighted. Uh, so thanks to them and, and Dara on the notes as well. Uh, everything was that perfect all day. Very fast stages today. Very fast pace. Yeah, it was quick. They were they were very technical stages really, and, and tricky and mixed surface and, and proper driving stages. So yeah, really enjoyable that way. And I was just saying that stage eight there was the, the long one, 17 k's, and it was probably the best cut we ever had in the car. It was it was just class. What's your next event now, Blander? Uh, we're planning to go to Wexford in two weeks. Oh, right. So uh, yeah, it's nice to sort of be uh, feeling good in the car, you know, going into that. And, lineup of, of top modified men there so it won't get any easier. Be a good race again. Exactly. Congratulations. Gary Kernan, one of the Mar 2 Escort challenge here today in Galway. Yeah, good weekend. Uh, we had a bit of a slow start this morning but our pace picked up then as the day went on. Uh, Richard Moff was better than the start. Uh, we couldn't really match him on some of the stages, two of the stages he was taking chunks out of us. So uh, no happy overall I'm happy with my results. Uh, we go again now in Wexford in two weeks. Very good, Nick. You're happy with the car all day? Yeah, no, no issues. Uh, hit the rock on one of the stages, but nothing too major. The wheel stayed hard, look, you know. So, all round good day. There's not a mark on a bar of wheels, so all good. And we've had the competition in the Mark II's day as well? Yeah, this is our fourth time winning this trophy, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I would have been over the moon if we could get the two wheel drive, but we're sort of lacking that extra wee bit of pace that we'd like. Uh, we'd have to try and work on it now in the next two weeks. So, congratulations. Cheers, thank you. Thanks once again to Joe there, um, mighty man for the job. And you know, what more can we say? And uh, then also last weekend we had Dava, it was a single stage done three times. Fabulous wee rally. I was up at it myself. Uh, we had sunshine, we had dust. Some of the photos you could be in Greece or somewhere, I don't know. But and like you know, the stage is very well received by the crews as well. Um real sort of driver stage technical. Narrow, fast, you know, that everything in it. Were you keeping an eye on proceedings there, Connor? Absolutely. I was following it. Now, last time I was up in Dava, it was tarmac. Um, so I would, yeah. have, would have loved to have been up to see it as a, as a gravel rally. Um, Because, you know, as a tarmac event, it was a cracking wee event that the Marfelt Club used to run on a Friday evening. Uh, used to enjoy going to that. But um, no, it was keeping a, a watch on it. Some great performances. Mark Donnelly. Um, what do you call it, Desi, um, Jason Mitchell as well. I thought they, you know, really strong performances there. Yeah, like, you know, we, we said all along, uh, Desi Henry has said that if he has the car, he will perform. And like, you ha I have to say he has, you know, I think every rally he's finished is one this year, you know, like, so um, um, he he was a, st a step above. Jason Mitchell, don't get me wrong, was going very well as well. Uh Jason has been concentrating on the tar up to now this year, and he's going to get faster and faster in the gravel as well too. So, um, I think it's going to be a fascinating battle in the Lakeland this weekend. But more of that later. Um, Mark Donnelly as well too. The times was coming closer as the day progressed. Um, yeah, uh, for like a small clubman rally, like there was, I think there was must be five or six rally two fiestas, and then a, a few rally uh, R twos, and that's and then you know the the. The, the Mark II's then when they started like you had Kelly, Frank Kelly Marty McCormick, Shane McGurr you know like guys if you've seen them in the list you would travel far enough to go and see <laughs> Absolutely yeah no listen some some great names in attendance and uh, what do you call it uh, some very strong performances there as well and good you know as well not just the drivers like the likes of Rory Kennedy was there as well um you know taking part um and, and Lauren sitting with Frank as as usual mm -hmm. um and Barney sitting within with Martin so you know what do you call it uh all round it was a well attended and and, and a very strong entry for for you know the little one day event yeah you know and like great to see you know and like you know we had all our end the other end of the scale ian miller out in the 1600 bda his son jake's first rally you know like we we stories like that i love the, the you know the wee side stories to events and you know like uh you know just this we talk about it the rally the family you know and him bringing his son to up, up into the, you know that's going to be the next generation of that family then to come to the rally and them too you know, and you, uh, Desi and Niall Henry, the two brothers, 
you know, Daisy won in the rally and now finishing, you know, fifth, four for fifth, I think, at the finish up. You know, like that's, that's a, you know, from that side of it, that's from my perspective, I love seeing that in sport. Yeah, no, fantastic to see. Uh, Niall, yeah, finished fourth, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, in the Fiesta there. And, and, you know, another solid run from himself and, you know, in ahead there, Paul Britton and Kenny Buster. So, you know, uh, they had a good performance in the Evo as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, then, you know, Frank Kelly then taking the two wheel drive runners and six overall and Shane McGurr, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, we heard from Shane last week. He's so chilled out and laid back out of the car, but they must like us watching <laughs> turn into an animal inside it. I don't know. And then you know, and then um, Marty McCormick and the BDA listening to the you know the, there was a BDA BDG whatever you want to call them. The, the, like that car singing, you could have heard it over two or three other cars coming down the stage. Absolutely cracking! It was like it was like to me that's like a bird singing. <laughs> Oh, listen, I would have loved to have listened to the sound of that bouncing mm-hmm. off the trees. Yeah. That's class, you know. So, um, you know, a, a great rally, and hopefully that's, you know, the start of something for the, the Metropolitan Motor Club. They also have the tourist parents come up later in the year as well, too, which will be fascinating, no doubt. So, and then, you know, this weekend we have come up then, the Israeli Car- Car- again, and then the Lakeland. But Car- again is the latest round of the BRC, and you know that's going to be another fascinating battle there. And um, you know, you Keith Crum and Ocean Price is going to go out at Hammer and Tongs. And um, this, you know, that battle is fascinating this year. That is, and like they're well matched. They're both in the Polo R five. There's very little between them. Um, you know, Ocean's on home ground. Mm-hmm. There's that you know added advantage there. And then throw into the mix, you have Marion Evans in there on home ground as well. And then you have Hayden Padden, you know, he's using this as a an, another round to, to get himself warmed up again in time for um, Rally New Zealand. Yeah. I, and, the, you know, we can't get, you know, there's a couple of other guys there too that's going to be thinking they're not going to be too far away either. And, and like having Hayden Padden there is going to add, you know, a different dimension to the event as well. Yeah. Oh, no, well, and I suppose for the event, it'll give it a bit extra entertainment. But you're right. There's Rory Bell who had a great run in the last round of the championship. Mm-hmm. You have Jason Pritchard, you have James Williams there. Again, all mm-hmm. strong contenders. And, you know, if things go their way, could well be in the mix there for podiums. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like, you know, we'll hear in a minute or two now, I caught up with Keith Cronin. Like, he has to go there. Like, with drop scores, they're even. So he can't afford to let Ocean away with the sailor. You know, he has to go there and, and give it a good fight then. Oh, yeah, he can't slack off. No, th- this is, he's he's got to go for gold here. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, the, I suppose it puts that bit of extra pressure on himself and Mikey, you know, to get it across the line and get mm-hmm. it across the line at first place. Yeah. And, you know, you know, from Ocean's point of view, we always know the home rally doesn't always go. <laughs> it's not always your your best event either. So he has to make that kind of his home advantage almost too. So that's going to be an absolutely fascinating battle. And then, you know, with the juniors, you know, him and Kelly, uh, uh, Joe Kelly's making his return to the, in the 208 as well too. Uh, Kyle White, Johnny Mulholland, and then, you know, there's the other guys there and, and the, you know, the rally four cars. And they, oh, they, that's almost as competitive as the main field. Oh, it is. And there's some really good competition there between the Irish guys, you know, mm-hmm. for... Bragging rights, if nothing else, in the, in the BRC. Mm-hmm. That is for sure, for sure. So I think we catch up with Keith Crone and uh, get his thoughts ahead of it. And we, caught, and we mentioned that you know the drive for five is his, you know, his aim for this year. So we'll get Keith's thoughts. Keith, um, your drive for five this year, you've been pushing hard from the start of the year. You're leading the championship going into the next round, the Rally Care Diggian in Wales. How is it going so far? How do you feel it's going so far? Yeah, it's been going good. Um, obviously, um, the new car this year probably took a few rallies to get into it, but um, we're getting on the pace now. Um, yes, we're leading the championship on, on points, but um, we drop scores, but we're actually level on points with Ocean, so um, it's a very tight battle, and uh, the, the ground will be another important one. And yeah, the you know, like as we say there earlier about the drive for five. Uh, Jimmy McRae was at the finish of the Nicky Grist stages. There was a bit of banter between the two. Yes, it would be nice to match his total. Ah, it would be great to match it, but um, it's going to be tough. Um, it's not easy to win win championships. Okay, the, the format has changed in the BRC over the last year, but uh, it's still tough championships to win. And um, 
as I said, now the next round is going to be super tough because uh, like it's, it's, it'll be like oh, me doing the West Cork nearly. It's on us. Like very close to, close to him in Wales. So, and he's done the rally before. So this, this next one's going to be particularly tough. But hopefully we can keep him under pressure and, and keep the keep the championship alive. Yeah, and then the the last two rounds are on gravel, the the track run, the track rod, and the Cambrian. Um, have you a preferred uh, surface now at this stage, gravel or tar, or you're happy in either? I'm, I'm happy enough in either, but I suppose early in the time I used to be doing a lot of both. But over the last few years, we've done a lot less gravel. I sort of done a lot less jet rallying in general, like missed three or four years in a row there at one stage. So, but when I was doing a few rallies here and there, it was nearly always tarmac. Uh, so, but I, I suppose traditionally I would have actually done better on gravel. But we're getting back. It was good to get the wind last day on gravel. It was good to get back on the pace on gravel. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, and then that, you know you were saying there about the Cardigan or Diggian State uh, Rally that Ocean has won it before. Very specialised tar. It wouldn't be sort of would be a different characteristic from Irish tar. Yeah, I, I would say it, it, it will be very different, but. Look, there'll be, there'll be sections the same, but there'll be, there'll be tricky sections. I was trying to do a couple of videos and stuff to see what they were like. Um, they, they look quite tricky. Um, there's not a lot of room for error going to be there. So um, we'll just see what we can do. We'll do the best we can. We'll hope, hopefully we'll put them under a bit of pressure and, and, um, you know, and, and see what happens from there. Yeah, and you know, uh, you, with the Irish Termite Championship wrapped up there last weekend, um, do you keep an eye on things back home? I, I would, would, would watch away a bit of rallying. It was um, more so now again. It was there with work and stuff. I've probably spent a few years I didn't watch watch much, in, in, but then the last few years now again I started to, to watch a bit at home and abroad. It was with, with Craig in the WRC. It's kind of uh, good good to watch that now again when, when someone flying the flag there. And obviously. Um, then my brother Daniel does a bit of rallying, so I'd always follow that. Um, you know, yeah. So I'd be keeping my my own thing. Yeah, and like there, there's no rounds over here this year. There's no Ulster or West Cork. Would that be something you'd like to see return to the BRC? Yeah, like it'd be great if it was, particularly the West Cork if that came back. It'd be not not that I've done it that many times, but I've done it a couple of times, and um, it's close. I don't have to travel, which which is nice. Um, so. Um, it would be great to see it back. I don't know how likely it is, um, but it would be good to have it back in the championship. Yeah, and then you know, like we'll look forward to the last two rounds on gravel, the track rod and the Cambria. The track rod in particular, you've won it before, so like an event you look forward to. Uh, yeah, I have gone well on the the the, the track rod in the past. Um, we've won the championship there a couple of times. It was the last round of the championship. Um, so yeah, I, I do like that rally. Um, the Cambrian, I only did it last year. We got a punch early on and um, kind of put us out of any any chance. And we'd have just, we just struggled a bit in that rally last year. It was very, very wet. Um, but I think the stages will probably change this year. So, um, yeah, no, we'll see what happens. And a huge thank you to Keith. I know he's absolutely up to his eyeballs at the minute and as busy as anything. Um, so really appreciate that he took the time out. I know it was only a short, you know, catch up with him and hopefully we'll get a longer one later in the year. But do appreciate him taking the time out. Um, so that brings us up to next round um, for the Northern Ireland Championship is the Lakeland Stages. Yeah, that's, that's going to be another fascinating rally, you know. Um like the, there's no entry list out, but there's an entries received there at the minute. Like, and there's over sixty entries in. And again, with all the main runners and riders that you 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 know you want to see in a gravel rally, like the four wheel drive especially is going to be that's going to be some battle. Oh no, it definitely is. Like some impressive entries there. And uh, say, just looking forward to uh, it's going to be a bit of a tough job whoever gets the seeding uh, yeah. <laughs> for this because um, yeah, I, I I haven't gone through the entry list now. I go, I would be struggling now to be going who's first, second, third, etc. Yes, uh-huh. you know you have Desi again. Uh, you know we you know how well Desi's going. Um, yeah, the brother Niall again, Niall McCullough, um, uh, Vivian Hamill, and Apollo, uh, Mark Donnelly there as well. Uh, also interesting to see a uh, Tarmac man Gary Kern out in Evo as well too. So that you know, that's interesting. Uh, yep. you know, Martin Kearns, uh, Derek Michaels there. Uh, you know, that's, there's there's a a strong strong four wheel drive lineup there. 
Absolutely, there is. And there's Connor McCourt and the Skoda. There's yeah. also Derek McGarry and the Skoda as well to throw mm-hmm. into the mix. Again, a bit hard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that, that's, that's going to be a tough one. And, and it looks like a very interesting challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, if Desi has this fiesta sorted, and fingers crossed he has now, he said, Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, especially after da- Dava, that would have been a good shakedown run for him to, to see where it's at. Mm-hmm. It'd be very hard to go past him, but you know, Cahan's on for him as well. Yeah, uh-huh. and like Johnny Leonard is uh hiring a, a fiesta for the event as well. Johnny always goes well in his home stages, that you know, so another man that we can't say, you know, he's not going to be far away either. You know, maybe it's first time out in the car, will it, you know, maybe a disadvantage, but he, he has that natural adapt- ability to jump into a car and go well. so don't discount him either. No, absolutely not. If um mm-hmm. if he can get comfortable with that car quickly, yep, he's gonna be interesting. Um with Niall Burns sitting on the notes, you yeah. know, with him as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, and then you know, it, it's um it's a compact enough route this year, it's three stages done twice. The, they leave the barracks out, do three stages service, and then back out and do the, the same three stages again. Um and it's 33, 34 competitive mile. So you have to be on it right from you come yeah. into first gear at the very start of the first stage. There's no margin for error there. No, there isn't. There definitely isn't. And uh, what do you call it? Just looking through the entry list there, I see Cahan hasn't got a car listed yet, so it'll be interesting to see what he comes out in, whether, mm-hmm. you know, back to the C3 or not, or or is he looking at something else? Yeah, and I, I would, uh, Hyundai was out in the, in the last round of the Gravels Championship there. Yeah. Uh, so, well, he, you know, and there was rumours going about a while back they had a polo, so <laughs> the one thing with Cahan, you're never sure of what he's going to be in until... Uh, you see it in the Saturday morning. <laughs> Absolutely, but whatever he's in, you know he'll push it. He will. He will. We'll not be far away from the top of the timesheets. I know you can be sure of that. And Jordan Hoon, another man who's going particularly well in the the uh, you know the Irish Forester Championship this year as well too. Absolutely. Again, another Fiesta R5 there. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. certainly one for the mix. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, in the two-wheel drive then, you have, you know, Shane McGurr, uh, uh, David Condell, uh, you know, Damien McGurn, you know, there's all guys there that will not be, you know, like to be in the mix there for the two-wheel drive as well. Yeah, I know. It should be interesting. Although, again, Shane, this is sort of territory suits him very well. Uh, he's home we, ground and all that yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is kind of hard to look past him now, in fairness. Yeah. Right? And we all know how hard the pedals up we started. So we have no doubt he'll not, he'll not be far away. Um, I caught up with him with Paddy Robinson. Um, we kind of, you know, give us a, a bit of a quick look back on where his season has been. Talked about Galway last week and we look forward then to this weekend as well. So, Paddy, we'll hear what he has to say. I, um, I've had a good year now. Um, I don't know, was, is it a bit hangover from COVID or something? But I found myself sitting in with two different drivers the year and um Galway yesterday was my 14th event this year you know and we've had a good finishing record you know we've only uh like four dnfs all year so um happy with that you know can't be anything but happy with it you know yeah and like you mentioned Galway there you're sitting second in the national championship after Galway like uh you know, we all know what Josh has done in the national championship but like to be sitting second there like, ahead of some great names Hi, Josh dominated the whole thing, you know, from 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 the first rally to the last rally done, you know, and he's had a phenomenal year. Um, we've we've pushed hard and we've we've changed cars in the middle of the year, you know, and we've had our ups and downs, but we're we're happy with our year, you know. Um, if you'd have told us the third of the year, we'd be sitting second going into the last round of the championship, you know, we'd have been relatively happy with that, you know. So we we, we can't really complain too much. Yeah, and like you know, yesterday I think probably showed the competitive nature of the championship. You know, it was like ten seconds covering you know, uh, at points covering maybe five or six cars. Absolutely, I um, you know, Gareth was Gareth had a stonking time on stage five, and that put him maybe 10, 11 seconds ahead of everybody. And uh, you know, the next three cars after that, after that were separated by six seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it's 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 almost like you would see in the Tarmac Championship there. You know, the stage times. You know, the last loop of stages yesterday. Um. You know, geez, there was there was no more than three seconds separating the top three cars on the last loop per stage. You know, which is it was great to be stuck in the middle of it. Yeah, and it's great to see you know some new names. You know, like you have um, David Guest, um, Greg Comiskey, all you know, all them guys up now mixing it amongst the leaders as well. It's always great to see new talent coming up through. 
it is surely yeah it's great to see lads coming through you know both of them have been around for a long time you know i sat with david back in 16 mm-hmm. myself and david won the tarmac championship and the national championship the following year in the group in care so um i know how good david is um mm-hmm. and it's nice to see him stepping up to the the later specification of fiesta and as for brendan top guy too he's, he's rallying since our lord was at school um <laughs> he's a real nice guy and it, it, I was delighted to see the pace he's, he's showing this past few rallies and especially yesterday now he seems to have gone up on another notch and he was just unfortunately caught that that square left and he caught the stone inside which which rolled him you know mm-hmm. and other than that there it was a flawless drive then absolutely yeah and then you know uh, you mentioned there Gareth McHale great to see McHale name back in the winner's circle of the game too oh absolutely isn't it class Listen, we all grew up um with Mikhail and the, the and the top two, top three of every rally we watched for years and years and years, you know, and to see Gareth come back after um twelve years without winning a rally to doing what he's done, you know, and having only gotten into the polo earlier this year, mm-hmm. that's phenomenal, you know, it just shows you how, how great a driver he is and such a class act. And it's great to see Brian still with appetite as well. Good to see mm-hmm. him in the passion seat too. That's for sure. You know, like you mentioned, you know, like uh uh, that you know how many years like how long ago has uh, Brian Murphy been on the go like he's been about for a wee lifetime <laughs> Brian's <laughs> Brian's been about a long time since I ever remember anything about Brian Brian Murphy's been there and you know to be able to stand at the side of the stage and have the crack with him and the chats with him you know it's it's it's, it's just great you know because somebody yeah you looked up to an idol when, when I was younger you know and just to be standing having the crack with him it's it's a nice feeling you know yeah it's like a pinch yourself moment almost I it, it almost is, you know. You know, he was telling me he was up at the Club Manny Festival um there what a few few weeks ago and he was telling me the crack he hadn't done a goal. So he's a real nice guy, so he's easy to talk to. Brilliant, brilliant. And then you know, you know, in some ways like Josh is the championship wrapped up and you're in the fight for a second. Like you know, without Josh there yesterday, it just shows like there is that, you know, possibly ten guys there that all were going to Galway thinking that at the very least, they were going to come away with with a podium. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I um, Josh did dominate the whole thing, and he's a class act. Um, but him stepping away now, yes, they'd open the open the floodgates for every other every other man to kind of look and kind of wonder is it possible to get to get a win here or even a podium, as you say. Um, but as there was what there was five or six cars started yesterday morning, which any one of them could have won the rally. You know, you know, if the conditions were right and everything was perfect for them, but um. No, it's just no harm not having Josh there. Yesterday, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then, you know, um, yeah, they're going to round out the championship, you know, closer to home for you. Uh, the harvest is going to be run out of God of Hork, I think, this year. God of Hork, I, God of Hork's only 20 minutes away from me here, so mm-hmm. it makes a big change to to me, travelling 20 minutes to rally instead of instead of travelling an hour to get to Donegal Town to get out of the county, you know? Um <laughs> Myself and Robert have been slagging all year, you know. Um, he, he sent me a snap last night. I'm, I'm at home and I was only in Sligo, <laughs> you know. So that's the sort of stuff I've been putting up with all year. So it's my turn to send him the snap turn a few weeks' time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this weekend, CG make the switch back to Desi and back onto the gravel again. Back to the gravel again. I um, hard to beat the gravel. Uh, it's the second round of that Northern Ireland Gravel Challenge, so it is. Mm-hmm. And myself and Desi are leading it after five mile town, so it's nice to get back into the gravel. We haven't been in the gravel since February time. Yeah. And um, you know, and Des- it's, it's, sorry, Desi's been having like the the events that, that he has finished. He has been he's won. I think they never he's finished. He's won. Uh, he's had some great results, but some real bad luck as well. I bad luck dog this, you know, a few times a year. Um, you know, we started the year in Killarney and that 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 ended uh, unfortunately, um, badly for everybody. And we went to five mile town then the following weekend. We, we had a real good run there, and we just seemed to tip away all year then, you know. And so a few issues with the car, and we got them rectified and went to the circuit, and we did we had a good run the circuit. Um, we were a bit surprised to be leading and leading well on the Friday night, but. We we started Saturday morning with the plan to stay in front, and we were we were staying in front, but uh, a wee sensor decided that it was going to upset our day, and then it upset it for a, a couple of weeks. So it did. Yeah. Um, that was a hard enough pull to take, but um, we we tipped away all year. Then you know we've had different results here and there, and you know we've we've led, we've led three rallies, which which we've retired from. You know mechanical, 
So um, we, we can't really complain about her, her, um, her events this year, you know? Oh, and, like, you know, touch with the car seems to be, you know, firing and working well now at the moment. So you'd, you'd be fairly confident going into the weekend? Ah, uh, the car seems to be sorted now, you know, between Desi and the guys in M-Sport. You know, they've, they've really stuck their heads together and they've, they've thrashed it out. And, and to be fair, M-Sport have, have come up with... with uh, a new map and software which which seems to work for us you know um, mm-hmm. you can see that last week in the Ulster we we went f- with with good confidence of, of a good result you know but we, uh, we were both a bit surprised now to be leading on the Friday night but um, I suppose that it, it shows the hard work that both Hamlet and M Sport have put into the thing and it's it's it's, it's starting to pay off you know so hopefully we can um, continue that now this, this Saturday coming mm-hmm. Lakeland and the, the Lakeland this Saturday, like it's not going to be easy either. There's a, it's going to be a very strong field there as well. Oh, there's a strong field, surely. Um, I think the the usual suspects are going. You know, you have the two McCourt, you have Neil McCullough, um, you've got Desi's brother Neil, um, you have, you have Johnny Leonard coming, mm-hmm. and an R five car. He'll be interesting to watch. Um, he's not soft either, and you've got Vivian Hamill entering the polo. Mm-hmm. So you know, there, there's there's plenty of bother there for us too. You know, that's for sure. That's for sure. And like the you know the Lakeland always put on a good rally. Uh, you know the Enniskill Motor Club has three stages done twice this year. So you know you would expect uh, you know uh, good stages. Uh, hopefully the weather's good and good competition. Like what more do you want in a day's rally? Oh, you couldn't beat it. Hey, you know, good friends, good good stages, good rally, good weather, hopefully as well. Um, I think it's a three stages done twice. It's a nice wee compact loop as far as I can gather, you know. Um it's it's based out of their Grosvenor Barracks in a skill. So I think it was was it nineteen or eighteen we did that. We we ran the rally to there last and it's just a lovely we 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 compact loop back in again. Mm-hmm. Um I think it's a total of thirty three stage miles. It's a wee bit short, like but like the stages are classed down there. So um it should be a good day's fun. Yeah, and then, you know, when you come out of the lake now and then, you're into the bush, you the Glens of Antrim and all, uh, or not the Glens of Antrim, I'm sorry, the Tour of the Sperns. You know, they're always great yeah. runners as well. Ah, they're class. Jeez, the, the Whackers, the daddy of them all. You know, the Whackers, the Donegal of gravel, you know, mm-hmm. as they say. Yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're in, but I would imagine it's a fairly similar format to what they always do. Mm-hmm. Um, So we're really looking forward to that there too. And I think the last round then, it's been run by... um. Is it Mara 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, apparently, they're going into Cam Forest, which we, we haven't been in Cam in years. And those now, those stages would, would probably, in my opinion, be the best in the whole country, you know, for the gravel stages. I, and you can imagine uh, the condition they're going to be in if they haven't been used now in a few years as well. They're going to be just. Oh, great. they're going to be clash. You know? mm-hmm. They're going to be clash, and you'd imagine at that time of year, you know, the it's going to be a bit dark in the evening time for us early, so you never know we make it a, a night stage out of it. <laughs> that, would, that would be, I because like we, we all love the, the night stages in the Ulster there, so we can imagine it through the forest would just be epic. Oh, it'd be epic in the, in the forest early. Like, it was just pure class last week mm-hmm. of going through Gullion in the dark, you know. Um, just you can imagine how, how, how exciting it would be going sideways in the forest, you know, in the dark. In mm-hmm. class. Yes, for sure, for sure. And like at this point, like you know, do you have a preference for gravel or tar, or are you happy in either service? I'm happy in either, to be honest with you. I, 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 if, if, it, if it was laid out on the table, I would probably say gravel. You know, really enjoy gravel. And uh, the speeds are obviously not quite as big as tar. Uh-huh. But the sensation of going sideways at high speed, that there, there's just nothing like it, you know. Yeah. And uh, these drivers, you know, the car control that they have and the, the, the angles they can get the cars facing before corners, it's just this mind-blowing, you know, from... From my side of the car, just looking across and seeing what they're doing, and the hands going, the feet going, it's just, it's, it's, it's just class, you know. It's like somebody dancing. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That literally is. Yeah, and like, uh, Paddy, like you have seen, you know, you've been through, you know, world cars and you know everything else, and you, you're in these latest spec rally two cars. They do seem to be like the, the business. They they seem to be faster than the older world cars. Uh, they must be phenomenal pieces of kit to get the spinning. They really are. You know, they're they're miles ahead of the World Rally cars. You know, the Rally the World Rally cars were um they were class bit of stuff and we were all in awe of them, you know, but they were a pig of a thing, you know, they were understeered, oversteered, you know, they just went really hard straight, you know, and everything else was a handling with them. 
but these these latest cars, you know, they're they're the engineering that's put into them is just phenomenal. You know, the you, the the way they go around stuff and the speed that them guys can carry. You know that, along with the development and tires and stuff, they're just unreal. You know, you know, and it's it's a pleasure just to sit in and it's it's busy in there. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, you know, you're you're working hard and you're working fast, but um, when the whole thing comes together, it's it's a class feeling. There's nothing like it. And like you know, we spoke to you know the drivers and you know previous times, and they say if never you hit that sweet spot, like you almost don't, you know, you almost don't remember what you're doing because it's just flowing naturally. Is that the yeah, same? Oh, from, is, is that the same from your side of the car as well? Oh, it is. I you know, um, I find you know maybe if I can get into a good rhythm very early in the stage, you know, it just it just sets the whole thing up. You know, you're you're nice and calm and you're. You're cool, and the, the, there's nothing about them that you don't get excited about nothing, and that that reflects across the other side of the car then too. And I generally find if I'm in a good rhythm, uh, the guy beside me is in a good rhythm too. And you know, it's when it, when it works, it works well, and it's it's class, a class feeling. Like you, you're going through the stage bombing, and you're you're getting everything right, and there's no hassle, and you come down the stage, and you have a you have a real good time. You know, the, there's no buzz like it. I great to hear from Paddy there. I always enjoy me chats with Paddy. Um, so that brings us to the end of this episode. So once again, can you please share, subscribe, rate, all those things. You know, they are vital, you know, and they, they do make such a difference. Um, we also just, as before we finish up, myself and Connor wanted to extend our sympathies to Stefan and the sister's family on the sad passing a couple of weeks ago. Um, what can we say? You know, a friend, you know, another fellow photographer on the ditches. Like You're Stephen a gentleman. Was, yeah, a gentleman. Yeah. Stefan was always there. You know, he's he's what was as quick as his finger on the camera. You know, he yeah. he was one of them people you always enjoyed meeting. There was always a bit of crack, a bit of banter, and um, he'd always a story of some description. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, I know. And any time I ever arrived down to a location on a stage, and I saw staff, and always had a smile because I knew it'd be a bit of a day's crack. You know, uh-huh. with him. yes, mm-hmm. he always knew the latest story and what was happening. So <laughs> he was always good for the gossip as well as everyone. He was, so. yeah. Yeah, so Stefan, rest in peace. You'll be sadly missing the ditches. So, certainly will. Yeah, so that's it for this week. So until the next time, take care, speak soon, and bye.